Okay, so we are starting unit four, um, which is going to get into solving equations and then actually graphing equations. It's kind of the majority of what this entire unit is going to be about. Um, so this first few lessons, all we're going to be focusing on are taking word problems and then writing either an expression or writing an equation from that. So in lesson one, we're just going to be writing equations using symbols. So there's a few things um, that I want you to write down kind of up near the top or wherever you have room. And that's a couple of words and what they mean. And as we go through these, these are going to be very, very crucial. So you want to make sure you clearly understand what these mean. Um, first of all is the word of. Okay, in math, and we talked about this a little bit last year, but anytime you see the word of, that means you're going to multiply. Okay, you'll see that a lot in percentage problems. Um, like if I had 60% of 15, I would take 60% times 15 to get whatever the answer of that is. Um, the second word that I want to go over is the word is. The word is in math means equals. Okay, so if I said 60% of 15 is 12, I'm totally just making this up, then I would, instead of the is, I would write an equal sign. Okay, so those are just two um, words in math that you'll see a lot with these word problems um, and take what they translate as the symbols that you would put in. So let's look at uh, problem one that's there on your paper. It says the sum of four consecutive even integers is negative 28. So we've got to break this down and figure out what really do these words mean. So the first word I see is the sum. If you try to remember what the sum means, the sum is the answer to an addition problem. So I know that I'm going to be adding some numbers together. So the sum of four consecutive even integers. So four, I'm going to have four numbers that I'm adding together. So the first thing that I like to do, especially if you like to see things and that helps you learn it better, since I know I'm going to be adding four numbers together, there's the first number plus, there's the second number plus, there's the third number plus, and then there's the fourth number and then we will fill these in as we go for what they mean but here I clearly have stated or have shown each of the four numbers now the next thing is consecutive consecutive if you're not sure that means they go in order okay um, so we're talking about consecutive even integers or numbers so even numbers that go in order so two four six eight 4, 6, 8, 10, 6, 8, 10, 12. Those are all four even numbers that go in order. And then the sum of those is, there's the key, so we said that is means equals, and then negative 28. Now, I have absolutely no clue what any of these four numbers are. All I know is that they have to add up to negative 28 and I know that they all have to be even and I know that they have to go in order. So good rule of thumb is let's just allow the first number to be x. If you know nothing about the number make it x. Then to get to the next one we know that this next number has to be the next even number. Well let's say that x was 2. The next even number is going to be 4. Well, to get from 2 to 4, I would actually have to add 2. So to get from x to the next even number, I would actually need to take x and add 2. Okay, my next even number, if I keep going with this pattern, would be 6. Well, to get to 6, I would have to add 2 to this previous one or add 4 to the very beginning one. So x plus 4. And you kind of see the pattern going on here. 
So my next even number, for instance, might be 8. Well, to get to the 8, I would have to take that 2 and add 6. So here's our equation right here, x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 6, and that all equals negative 28. Now on this first lesson, we're not going to worry about solving those, so we are just going to leave the equation just like this, and that's going to be our answer for now. We're just going to focus on getting them written for right now. All right, so let's look at number two. It says a number is four times larger than the square of half the number. So first thing I have is a number. I don't know what number. I don't even have a clue of what number that is. So that's going to be my x. Okay, there's the word is. We said is means equals. Four write the number four, times, I'm going to put a time sign, larger, so four times larger than the square of half the number. So anytime you see the word square, that means it's going to have an exponent of two. And you are squaring half of the number. So here's half, and then that number we said we had no idea, so we made it x. Okay, so all I have done here is I have just written exactly what the words say. A number, I don't know, that's my x. Is means equals four times, I wrote four times, larger than the square, so I know it will have an exponent of two, half the number. Okay, so let's go ahead and translate this down here. X equals 4 times. And then anytime you're going to have an exponent and you're taking the square of something more than just a number, you want to put that in parentheses. So I'm going to put my exponent outside the parentheses. And then this half of the number could go in, would go inside the parentheses. So I would just write 1 half x. Another way you could write this, because if you take half of something, you also divide it by 2. So I could also write this as x equals 4 times x divided by 2 to the second power. So either one of those would work, whichever one makes more sense to you. Okay, let's look at number 3. It says Stephen has some money. I don't know how much money he has, he just has some money. If he spends $9, then he will have three-fifths of the amount that he started with. So, just going to write in some information that I know. He has some money. I have no clue how much money he has. That's going to be my X. If he spends $9, well, think about it. If you spend $9, do you add $9 or do you subtract $9? you're spending, you're going to subtract 9. Then he will have 3 fifths of, means multiply, the amount that he started with. And he started with x. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this instead of a, an x for a time sign. I'm just going to put a little dot. You can see how it can get kind of confusing here. Okay, so I'm just going to write this. He has some money. He spends $9. So he took his money, spent $9. And if he spent that money, then that means he will have, we'll just take the wording of that. Then he will have, that means that when he spends 9, that has to be equal to 3 fifths of times what he started with, x. Okay, and you don't even really need the dot for the time sign in there, you could just rewrite it as 3 fifths x. And that's it. Okay, number four says the sum of a number squared and three less than twice the number is 129. So the sum, I'm going to add. A number squared, well I don't know what that number is, so that's my x. 
I do know that it's squared, so I'm going to have an exponent of 2. And 3 less than twice the number. So 3 less than means subtract. Twice means you're doing something two times, so two times this number, which is x. Now, one thing that's a little weird with this, anytime you see the word less than, it actually makes your problem backwards from what it would seem. So instead of this being 3 minus 2x, you actually flip it around and it would be 2x minus 3. That is, anytime you see the word less than or fewer than, it's going to flip it around. So I'm going to add here what I have in blue and here what I have in blue. So x squared plus. Now since this part 2x minus 3 has multiple parts to it, we call those terms. 2x is a term and 3 is a term. I'm going to put those inside parentheses. So the sum of x squared and 2x minus 3, it is means equals and then 129 and that's it. The last one, number five on your paper, says Miriam read a book with an unknown number of pages. So right there, there's my x. It's unknown. The first week she read five less than 13 of the pages. And I apologize, that should be five less than one third of the pages. So I corrected that online real quick. Um, so that was the first week. The second week she read 171 more pages and finished the book. Write an equation that represents the total number of pages in the book. So we already don't know how many pages are in the book. That is x, that's the total. We do know that the first week, so here's the first week. I'll put this line over here for the second week. First week she read five less than, that should raise a flag in your brain, less than one third of, means times, the pages. I don't know how many pages were in the book, so that's my x. So that less than should have raised a flag because what happens when you see the word less than? Well, you know it means subtract, but they're actually going to be flipped around. So instead of writing 5 minus 1 third x, I'm going to write 1 third x minus 5. So that was the first week. The second week, she read 171 more pages and finished the book. That's it. She read 171 pages. Write an equation that represents the total number of pages. So now we just need to figure out what you do with these two numbers. Here's what she read the first week. Here's what she read the second week. We know that combined they have to end up being the entire book. So we would need to add all of those pages together to get what would be in the entire book. So here's our equation for how many pages are in the book. So now if you will flip over to the back of your note sheet you have your problem set for today so that'll be your homework. You also have a quiz on Canvas that you need to get on and take over this lesson that we did.